Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Metropolis Radio. And today, I know that I'm making kind of a response video. Typically, I don't do these just because, quite frankly, I'm not really that interested in them. I've done a few of them, and I don't really like the format, but sometimes someone just comes out with such a dumbass opinion that you have no choice but to try to make something that counters it. So... The, uh, the thing we're going to be responding to is a video done by, uh, this, uh, done by, you know, this guy called, uh, Review Tech USA. You may have heard of him if you're in, if you're on the, if you're into the gaming side uh, of YouTube, unfortunately. I used to follow this guy many, many years ago. I stopped recently. I check in from time to time. More, more to just laugh at him than, than anything. But, um, he recently came out with a video, and I know this is a few days old now, titled, uh, Aaron Greenberg doesn't give a crap about PlayStation fans' feelings. Now, the part of the video that we're going to respond to, I'm going to put up on the screen right here so that you can view it in its full context before we really deep dive into this. So, um, without further ado, let's go ahead and just roll the clip. Aaron Greenberg was like, yeah, no, I'm not sorry. <laughs> I, I, what, what do you, what did you think was going to happen when Microsoft acquired a company for an insane amount of money like that? Do you think they were just going to be charitable and be like, Hey, we're even going to make Starfield run on the Commodore 64 out of the kindness of our hearts. What do you, what did you think they want? They bought the company so they could have exclusives to incentivize people either to buy into Xbox game pass ultimate or Xbox game pass in general or to buy a Microsoft console. They either want you to play the game on PC through Xbox Game Pass and sign up for their service, or buy an Xbox Series X or S. They're no dummies. That's what people buy companies for. That's why games are exclusive. If you could play a Nintendo game, say you could play Super Mario Odyssey on your Xbox Series S or X or PlayStation 5, what the hell would you need to buy a Nintendo Switch for? There's a reason that, ex look, I know exclusives as as we progress into gaming and, and, and gaming becomes more expensive and, and gaming becomes more universal and more widely accepted, in which it already is, but it's get, getting even more widely accepted, that the waters are getting muddied and we're seeing games from Sony go on PC we, and obviously with Xbox Game Pass, all of Microsoft's first party and second party IPs are already on Game Pass day one, but there's still a reason for some exclusivity because if you could play a game on any damn platform that you want, what the hell is the point of giving a certain company money? And Microsoft didn't invest over $7 billion in Bethesda to not be, make them profitable, do not turn a profit on it, do not make money off of it. So of course they're going to not have games on their competitors' platform. It just makes sense. It's common sense. And look, it is what it is. I, I get if people are angry, but I'm kind of in Aaron Greenberg's camp. He shouldn't be sorry. This is business. Businesses are competitive. And if they aren't competitive, they lose. Just look, if you really want to play Starfield or whatever year it comes out, the Elder Scrolls 6 comes out, you're either going to have to get a gaming PC or if you really don't want to get an Xbox Series S then and play it there. It's just how it is. Companies have to remain competitive and this is the part of the way, I should say, that they do it. By having exclusives, you can't get anywhere else. Okay, so I just realized that I forgot to give context to what the, the to what the clip is. What is he referring to with Aaron Greenberg? Basically, um, PlayStation fans are upset that now they're that uh, Bethesda's new game Starfield is not coming to the uh, PS5, despite the fact that it was hyped up as a multi-platform game, and it's been hyped up for several years. That you know this is going to be Bethesda's new IP now. I don't really remember what Starfield was going to be. Um, I'm sorry, I genuinely, I genuinely don't. If if any of you guys watching this knows, can you please leave it down below in the comment section? Because I'm I'm not gonna look this up right now. Um, because I just I have to get going on this on this response. But um, yeah, I, I'm sorry, I genuinely don't remember what Starfield was about. 
So I wrote down some points to, you know, kind of, you know, debunk the clip. Not not debunk the clip, but there isn't a better word I can think of to describe it right now. So the first point I want to bring up is run Starfield on a Commodore 64. That's not what people are complaining about. Oh, if if if, if they made, you know, start would they, do you think Microsoft would allow Bethesda to make Starfield run on a Commodore 64? And this is what he always fucking does and this is why I stopped watching him. He loves to downplay the backlash. I remember a few years ago when the whole the whole big thing on the gaming side of YouTube was uh, are YouTubers ruining retro gaming? This was pretty popular back in 2017. And he decided to categorize all of the people that were saying, yes, YouTubers were ruining, you know, YouTubers like Metal Jesus Rocks, Pat the NES Punk, and James Rolfe were ruining retro gaming because they were driving up the prices of these retro games to such insane levels. Instead of looking at it as, you know what, some of these people within the retro gaming community have a vested interest and keeping the prices as sky high as they are. No, no, no. He wrote it all off as, you know, the the these people that that don't want retro gaming to be popular just want to keep all their precious little games to themselves. If you don't believe me, look up his video on on our YouTubers ruining retro gaming. I think that is the exact title of of his, you know, of his video. The second point I want to bring up is he makes a very, very bad comparison. Oh, if you could just play Mario Odyssey on an Xbox One or a PS5, then what would be the point of buying a Nintendo console? Again, another way of downplaying the backlash. He's conflating first-party exclusivity with just straight-up buying exclusivity. Okay, you can't play Mario Odyssey on an Xbox One or PS5 because the game is developed and published by fucking Nintendo. All right, now you do have another form of exclusivity that people don't bring up, and that is second party exclusivity. Basically, what second party exclusivity is for those that are not into gaming, it is when a company like Sony, Microsoft, or Nintendo goes to a third party game developer and pays them a crap ton of money to develop a game specifically for their console. Perfect examples include Devil May Cry. That was a series that released exclusively on the PS2 from Devil May Cry 1 through 3. Uh, you also have Ratchet and Clank from Insomniac Games. Sony did not own Insomniac Games back when they developed the first Ratchet and Clank game back in 2002. Now Ratchet and Clank is a first party exclusive, but it was a second party exclusive for, se for several years. Uh, in fact, a lot of Star Wars games were were second party exclusive. Uh, Star Wars Shadows of the Empire was only on the Nintendo 64. Uh, Star Wars Rogue Squadron 2 and 3 could only be played on the GameCube. The first Rogue Squadron game could be played on Windows back in the late 90s, to be fair. It wasn't exclusive to just the Nintendo 64. Uh, what's another one? Oh, Star Wars KOTOR, Knights of the Old Republic 1 and 2, exclusive to the Xbox. Um, Star Wars Republic Commando. Up until recently, the only way you could play that game is if you either had an original Xbox or if you or if you had a gaming PC that specifically ran Windows. And um, I had a couple. Oh, uh, the, the Super Star Wars game, Super Star Wars and Super Star Wars Empire Strikes Back released exclusively for the Super Nintendo. Uh, Super Star Wars Return of the Jedi, I think that had a Game Boy port at one point, but at least the first two Super Star Wars games were exclusive to the to the Super Nintendo. Again, consoles absolutely need exclusivity, and I agree with him on that. They need a strong first-party catalog and a second-party exclusive catalog to drive sale to drive sales for, for for their game. You know, that that's what people mean by exclusivity drives sales. Which leads me to my third point, which is just buying exclusivity versus first party. And a perfect example was Rise of the Tomb Raider. If you remember, this was back in 2014, 2015. Uh, I believe it was 2014. It was rumored that Rise of the Tomb Raider, sequel to 2013's, to 2013's Tomb Raider reboot, was going to be exclusive to the Xbox One. Richard Masucci at this time called this move brilliant despite the fact um yeah, despite yeah, despite the fact that tomb raider 2013 sold more copies on the ps4 than the xbox one 
Oh, you you don't believe me? Richard Masucci himself reported on that fact. But uh, let's get back to that uh, Rise of the Tomb Raider being exclusive to Xbox One and him calling it brilliant. It was not a pop. It was not a popular video even amongst his own fan base. Now, granted, he never took it down. You know, to be fair. But you want to know the only thing that he cried and bitched about at that time? It wasn't that it was exclusive to the Xbox One, is that it was going to be a timed exclusive. You know, he he complained that Microsoft didn't just pay to buy to just buy the buy the rights to Rise of the Tomb Raider so people who had PS4s could never get it. You know, you have Tomb Raider that is that was a multi-platform series from the very first game. You could play it on the PlayStation, on the Sega Saturn, and on the PC. You then, well, let's let's use a more common example. So that'd be Tomb Raider 2013, released for PlayStation 3, Xbox 360, PlayStation 4, Xbox One, and PC. Now you have the sequel to a multi-platform game coming out for just the Xbox One, the console that sold the least amount of copies of Tomb Raider 2013. But according to Richard Masucci, it was brilliant to piss off all the people that bought the first game on the PlayStation 4. And this takes me into my into my next point, which is the idea of taking multi-platform game series and making them exclusives is a very, very bad idea for all companies involved. So now let's look at all of the let's look at some of the franchises that are now going to be exclusive to the Xbox Series X. Uh, you're talking Doom. You're talking the Elder Scrolls. You're talking Fallout. You're talking uh, Dishonored. Um, and the list could go on. The, li the list goes on and on here. So, oh, uh, you played Doom 2016 and Doom Eternal on your PS4? Well, too bad, bitch. Buy an Xbox if you want to play Doom. If you want to play Doom 3, buy an Xbox. Oh, you could play The Elder Scrolls 4 Oblivion on your Xbox 360, PS3, and PC, along with uh, Skyrim. You can play it on the PlayStation 3, Xbox 360, Xbox One, PlayStation 4, Nintendo Switch, and PC. Too bad, bitch. Buy an Xbox if you want to play Elder Scrolls 6. Oh, you want to play Fallout 5 when you played Fallout 3 on your PlayStation 3? Fallout New Vegas on your PlayStation 3? Fallout 4 on your PlayStation 4? Too bad, bitch. Buy an Xbox. Oh, you you liked Dishonored? You, I, I, think at the, I think at this point you get my point. I'm not, I'm not going to repeat. I'm not going to repeat myself. You know, th this is this is all that this is all that's going to happen is more and more people obviously were going to be pissed off. And here's another thing that Richard's not bringing up. Microsoft also acquired Obsidian, which released the game The Outer Worlds just a couple of years ago. So now you have a game that let's call for what it was. It was a direct competitor to Fallout. It was a direct competitor to Fallout 4. Now Obsidi Obsidian Entertainment and Bethesda are no longer allowed to compete with each other. That's going to be a problem, which what what's that going what's that going to lead to? It's going to lead to both studios games degrading over, degrading in quality over time. And if you don't believe me, look at the state of the Star Wars franchise and the MCU right now. Neither franchise can compete because they're both owned by Disney, despite the fact that these two franchises, the Marvel Cinematic Universe and Star Wars, should be headbutting rivals, but they can't be because they're owned by the same parent company. And people always bring up this fact that, you know, oh, well, you know, PlayStation fan boy, PlayStation fans rubbed it in Xbox fan in Xbox fans faces that they got Spider-Man on the PS4, despite the fact that Spider-Man is a universally beloved character, blah, 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 acting like there has been no exclusive games for any other consoles. You know, let's bring up Spider-Man. He had exclusive games on the Game Boy. He had... Do, you, do does anyone remember Spider uh, the Amazing Spider-Man Web of Fire? Most people don't because it released exclusively for the Sega 32X. Um, you also had um, oh uh, Spider-Man 2: Enter Electro. This was right after Activision acquired the license. Uh, the first Spider-Man game released for the Nintendo 64 and the PlayStation, at least console-wise. I don't remember if it released on PC, but it's neither here nor there. But the sequel to that game, Spider-Man 2: Enter Electro, only released on the PlayStation. So Spider-Man has had exclusive games on many other consoles. Earlier in this video, I went over all of the uh, many of the exclusives that that the Star Wars games have. But 
how come when Spider-Man has exclusives on other consoles and Star Wars has exclusives on other consoles, how is that not a big deal? Because you're not taking a pre-existing game series and turning it into a multiplayer. Imagine if they made, let's say, let's say, you know, oh, who made, who made Super Star Wars? I can't remember right now. My brain's kind of fried. But let's say they developed Super Star Wars and it's, it's exclusive to the Super Nintendo. Then Sega comes along and says, oh, you want to play Super Star Wars Empire Strikes Back? Well, guess you got to buy a Genesis then. How many people would have been upset at the time? Probably quite a few because the first Super Star Wars game wasn't even on the fucking Genesis. So of course people who own a of course people who own a Super Nintendo are going to be upset. And finally, you know, my, my brain is fucking hurting right now trying to respond to this guy. I'm just gonna basically come down. I'm gonna come down to it. I don't even think he's being intellectually dishonest. I think he's genuinely just a fucking dumbass. And you know, look look over the years. He changes his opinion based on which way the wind is blowing that day. He comes out and he goes against popular opinion. Chances are very high he's either going to delete the video because he has in the past. Um, go ahead and ponder whatever happened to him um, uh, coming out against Nintendo for uh, licensing out uh, their micro SD cards to, uh, to SanDisk and, oh, they're going to prey on all the soccer moms. Oh, wait, that's right. You can't actually watch that video because he deleted it. But I remember it, Richard. But th th that's that's exact that's exactly all he does. I wouldn't even call him a contrarian just to be a contrarian. He's not even that that good of a of, of a of a shock jock because he ju he just comes across as a fucking dumbass, and that's that's truly all he is. And I've spent more than enough time on this. Basically, I'm just going to end this video off with this: exclusivity is a necessary evil when it comes to console games. But when you have a company like Microsoft just acquiring these game studios like a hungry, hungry hippo, pretty soon, you know, you're, you're not buying an Xbox because it's the best platform. You're buying an Xbox because you want to play The Elder Scrolls VI because you love Skyrim so much. But you can't play The Elder Scrolls VI on your PS5 despite the fact that you could play Skyrim on your PS4. Doesn't, doesn't matter anymore. You were a fan of Fallout 4? Well, you want to play Fallout 5, you got to buy an Xbox, which is just going to open the door for Microsoft to start cutting corners and start fucking their consumers in the ass with no lube, and there's little to no recourse because they own too much of the gaming industry. And you know, and you know what? Richard not that long ago came out against Sony for being anti-consumer for upcharging people to upgrade Ghost of Tsushima from the base game to the director's cut. Now, a lot of game developers do this, and I am and I am not for this as well, mind you. But he comes out and cries the fact, oh, it's anti-consumer! But yet my but yet Microsoft comes out and acquires Bethesda for seven billion dollars and starts restricting what was prior multi-platform game franchises and locks them onto the Xbox. Oh, that's such a brilliant business move. And, and Sony, you better step up and you start competing. It, personally, if I, were to, if I were to weigh right now who is, what is more anti-consumer, upcharging people for the Ghost of Tsushima director's cut or buying a or buying a major developer like Bethesda um, with multi-platform game franchises and locking them to just Xbox, Microsoft right now is being more fucking anti-consumer than Sony is right now, and that's really saying something because Sony is not 100% innocent in this either. Neither is Nintendo. And like I said, guys, I'm gonna go ahead and end it right here because. I could keep going. I could keep going for the next couple of hours, but I don't feel like I don't feel like doing that. I think I've got I think I've gotten my point across. But um, how do you guys feel about Starfield not coming to the PS5? Again, I think it's rather shitty that this game has been hyped up for several years, and it was originally going to be a multi-platform game. Now it's going to be an exclusive to the Xbox One. You know, if I if I were one of those people excited for Starfield, yeah, I would be I would be fucking pissed off. You know, just my personal opinion. Um, so I'm gonna end it right here. And if you guys have been following me for a while, you know I am terrible at ending these videos. So I will just see you guys uh, next time.